everyone. It is good to see such a nice crowd. And I know many of you are, were students of K's, uh, maybe associates, and, and we're so pleased that you've joined us. We're grateful to have uh, Dean Shauna Mendini joining us. And I'll also uh, mention that Jackie Marchant, many of you that are students of theater, arts, and dance will know Jackie. And tomorrow is her last day. She's retiring. And uh, I know that department will miss her. Okay, we'll turn the time over to you. dancing to um, break the ice, release any tension, any stress, and smile because with tap shoes on, you can't help, you can't help but smile. Many of those steps, you all know them because year after year, we would add to, clean, take away, and as we'd practice our te technique. So, wow, this is what happens when you get my age. You get winded. <laughs> no, it's awesome and a privilege to be here. I feel very grateful and honored. And when Ron asked me about sharing some of my thoughts, my path, and what I learned along the way, I thought, wow, my goodness. If this is my path, this is my map, you can see it's going to be all over the place. <laughs> OK. Also, I thought, what would I have to share with you all? I think what I'm going to share are things that you already know, things that we've talked about, lessons that I've learned. Maybe some don't even have anything to do with dance, but they helped me through dancing and helped me express myself through dancing some of the lessons that I've learned. And so I think it will give the idea that it's universal. All of us are in this together and experiencing many of these same wonderful opportunities through dance. Um, first of all, I want you to look at this beautiful studio we're in today. My goodness, if these walls could talk, they'd have lots of wonderful things to say. We could be here for hours and days. I know when I first got here, Jackie shared the with me a story that this is the, the library at one time. So from being a library here at SU, when they built the ELC, they moved the library from here to there. And she said they created a chain of bodies to transfer all the books out of this room into the new library. From then, it became a black box for the theater department. And in 1982, when President Sherritt brought Birchman, 
St. Christopher and Gwen Grimes that teach, they just turn into a, a dance studio. And we'll talk about, we'll talk about that more later. But it's a beautiful space. Um, lots of wonderful memories here for all of you. I mentioned the word gratitude. I think that gratitude, being grateful, is the word that has kind of directed my path from the time I was a little boy to now and for the rest of my life, just being grateful for this beautiful life that we all share and all the opportunities that it gives us to work together and to be together and to learn from each other. So I'm going to be sharing words in between stories that kind of highlight maybe what I learned at that particular time in life that maybe helped me, helped me get to the next step. But as I talk about my life as a, a young boy, Many of you may or may not know, I grew up in a tiny little town called Petersboro, Utah, up in Cache Valley, west of Logan, about 15 miles. It was a town of approximately 52 people. Maybe now it's up to 75, I don't know. <laughs> My closest neighbor lived a half a mile away. We were in the middle of fields in between mountains. There were no schools, no stores, no gas stations, no post office. There was nothing but a few dotted farms and some dear friends, families, and lots of animals. So that gives you a, a little bit of a background to where I came from, to where I kind of went, and to where I came back to. And where I continue to go to. Um, the farm, animals. I love the farm. I learned from a very young age that I think my job in the family was to smile, to laugh, to make people happy. I was the entertainer. Because um, on the farm, there's a lot of work. Sunrise to sunset, there's always something to do. There's never a time to just say, what am I going to do next? <laughs> and so I think I brought some, some comedy, comic relief to some of those times and, and sharing lovely moments with, with family and friends. They think, okay, uh, Kay, a, a little farm boy, how did he get involved in dance and how did he decide that that was going to be his life? passion that he was going to do it for the rest of his life and until I die and when I die you can bury me with my tap shoes on and everything will be great but I think as a family we enjoyed we enjoyed watching the Lawrence Welk show and Ned Sullivan show and so many of you don't know of those shows but there was always entertainment there was always a lot of dancing a lot of singing although my mom shared with me that when the singing would come on, she, I would say, oh, another song. I just wanted to see the dancing. Dance, dance, dance. And especially the tap dance really grabbed my attention as a young boy. I'm, I'm sure it was a bundle of energy. I probably had never stopped. And uh, tap dancing was a good way to help channel. Dance class is a, help, a way to help channel and organize all that energy that I had all the time. So at age seven, my mom and dad say, okay, if Kay wants to take tap dancing classes, let's see how we can get this, let's see what we can do about this. And I am so grateful, here's that word, I'm so grateful. That... This is gonna be a blubbering mess, I think. <laughs> Oh, well, I'm so grateful that, that they thought that if it, if it was that important to me, that they should find classes for me to study tap. So they took me to Logan, and, put, and I was, took classes with um, 
Movita Carden School of Dance. And I started with tap dancing and tumbling. <laughs> Movita was a, a wonderful teacher. She was trained by the Christensen brothers. She had a lot of ballet background, but she had a lot of entertainment and show background. And she loved utilizing tap as a way of uh, training her dancers. And I, from the first moment I put those tap shoes, I, I remember going to the class the first time. Mom had brought me to the class. I had my, my coat on, and I, I didn't have any tap shoes on at that time. I was just standing by the side of the room, and Movita said, okay, aren't you going to join the class? So I joined the class, and from that moment on, I just couldn't get enough of being in, in dance class. So as I started tapping, so obviously going back to the farm, I would take those tap steps. I would practice them everywhere. I'd be milking cows. I'd be tapping, tapping in the, on the cement in the barn, I, out in the crails. I'd be dancing around the crails. And I, that's where I come up with my title of this little uh, discussion and sharing with you what I learned from dancing on the backs of cows. And there are a few words that I learned as a young boy that have inspired me through my entire life. And I just wrote down a few of them. I knew from a very young age I was a dreamer. I was a creative thinker, even though I don't, didn't know I was a creative thinker that time. I was a problem solver. I was determined. I loved performing. I had to deal with balance, not only balancing on the cow's back, but balancing all the elements of my life at that time, uh, core connectivity, and uh, one, and hard work. As you can imagine, on the farm, we worked hard. I would wake up at 5.30, I'd, I'd milk cows, I'd go to school. After school, my mom, I'd get off the bus in Logan and take my dance classes. Mom would pick me up from, the, from Logan, take me home, uh, get some dinner, or go straight to milking cows, do the feeding, and do my homework, and that was a day. So I, we, I learned at a young age what it was to work hard, and if you love something, you worked hard to get it. And that was something I've always... Um, been a trademark of my life. Um, like I said, as, along the way, I think we cannot get enough of wearing a smile and laughing. Life can throw you lots and lots of curves, but as long as we can keep a smile on our face and deal with it and put the pieces together and laugh and go on, uh, I think we're going to really make a sense of who we are. So what, why did I want to dance on a, on a cow's back? How, how did I come up with that idea? Well, it started when cows were feeding in the manger, and there was the top of the, the barn, had some beams on it. I'd hang onto the beams and jump from one cow to the next. And, as, and I, I was only seven years old, six years old, so I weighed probably next to nothing. And so the cows didn't even care that I was jumping from one to the next, to the next, to the next, down the aisle. Well, and even though I was practicing my tap steps, you know, people think, oh, my cow, the cow's back is like this. But if you have the back of the cow, you have a nice, nice base to dance on. So I would practice my tap steps on the very back of the cow, my, all my tap steps, and I'd perfect them. And, and, and I always had a hold of the, the beam. Well, one time the cow I was on backed out, and there I was on top of this cow. And here goes my balance, not losing a step, and dancing as the cow would walk around the crail. There I was dancing on the back of this cow. Well, something uh, tweet, turned on in my head. I thought, oh, this could, be, this could be fun to invite the neighbors, or this could, could be fun to like, create a show or, or, or put on some, entertain my friends. And so picture this, there I am in the crowd, I invite my friends to come and they would sit on the fence. And then I would say, here, kitty, 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 kitty. 
That's my cow's name. My cow's name was Kitty. And she would come running out of the corral to me. And all my friends thought just that was an amazing show. So then I'd get on top of the cow and start my show, do the tap steps, and the cow would uh, meander about the corral. And then I, obviously I, I, I couldn't direct Kitty where to go. So eventually I'd jump off and continue my show and, and other, by other, uh, other, other means. But that was the beginning. And then I, from there, I added to the show. I'd incorporate friends into the show. I would do different things, all, at, all as a way to, you know, enjoy and have fun and, and smile and laugh and, and perform and, and share what I was learning in dance classes. I was very lucky that I was very supported by friends and family with what I, with my choice of dancing and, and, and loving loving that part, aspect of my life. So that's how it all started. Um, so going back to Movida, every day I'd go take either tap and tumbling, and then she said, okay, you need to take ballet classes. So I started adding ballet classes to it and, and jazz classes to it, and, and, and that became my life every day after school. So all through grade school, junior high, and high school, um, it was, that was my life, and it was fun, and I loved it. In college, I continued to, uh, my family was very um, proponent of education, because, uh, you know, it's really hard for a farm life these days, a family farm, to exist with the cost of machinery, and it's just, it's just next to impo impossible, and I know they knew that from early on. So they encouraged all of us to, to, uh, further our education and leave the farm. Well, I don't think they expected me to want to leave the farm dancing in the beginning. I know in my second year at, at USU, that summer uh, before my, my third year, I took some workshops with, uh, with, with Birchman and San Christopher Dance West at Utah State University. And I just, I just, I fell in love with them. I fell in love with the, the classes. I fell in love with, with what they offered, who they were. They, I was invited to dance with the festival, at Festival American West, along with Dean Mendini. We go way back. And, and after that, Bert says, well, Kay, why don't you come to Los Angeles? to dance with the American Folk Ballet and also be a part of the Americana Dance Theater. So here I am, I have finished my second year. And so I tell my parents I'm going to drop out of school and move to LA. Well, in the beginning, that didn't go over very well. But eventually, mom says, okay, if that's going to make you happy, if that's what you want to do, of course. And so I, I moved to LA with their blessing and con to continue my dance, dance education, career. This is my first job as a, as a professional dancer. It was a full-time job. We lived and breathed and danced all day long. We performed all over the LA, California. We would tour through the Western states. And we were part of something that's called See to Title VI, where we would take dance into schools, um, government civic opportunities, all over, everywhere they wanted to see dance, we would represent LA with, the, with American, Americana Dance Theater. Um, so being with Birch and San, my goodness, you learn so many things, not only about dance and technique, but you learn so much about life. Birch talked a lot, a great deal about the artist spirit, the creative spirit that each one of us as, as individuals has within us. And that it's our gift and our responsibility to nurture that spirit and to nurture that and to discover who we are so that we can share it with, with others. And what a gift that is to know that, know that each of us as individuals have something unique to bring to this, this table, bring to this 
for this world of, of dance. I know we always share with the students about Birch and Sand at graduation when we talk about scholarships and, and, we, and how Birch was always, you had to be able to fly with the wind, leap with the wind and spin like a top and have feet faster than lightning and just eat up space. And, and with Sand, Sand was more of a nurturer. She is the more of a caring of the individual. They both were, but San was the one who would say, okay, if once you've made it, she would say, there. And she'd put your hand on your shoulder and say, there. <laughs> and you knew that you had accomplished something for San to, San to say that to you. But they were two wonderful, wonderful ladies that had so much to offer to the world of dance, taking different genres of dance, ballet and folk and modern, and creating a new style of dance to create, to create a new form of dance to explain and share what the American West was about and how different people would dance and, or share their lives through dance, in essence kind of a romanticized version of what life was, was back then. But I loved those experiences. I loved being a part of a dance company. I loved being a part of who, who I am and what I could bring to that group of dancers, being the individual, yet being a part of a, an ensemble. That was a, a true gift that I was, I was, I was given. Um, Many times we think of dance and think, okay, time. When is it the right time? When is it the time? When do you know when to take that, ne that next step? And I just say it's just a, a gut feeling. Just, I just know that, because I had no idea. I just knew I wanted to dance for the rest of my life. But I, did not, I didn't know what I, was wanted, what I was going to do. Opportunities would present themselves maybe through friends or networking or through, and one thing just led, led to the next thing. And it was such a, um, a wonderful, my, I think my, my job was to get out of the way of life, to let life happen, to be prepared for what may, may come my way. And while I was there, I, there, was a, there was an audition uh, talking about time. There was a Debbie Reynolds audition that she wanted to, she was auditioning to go to Las Vegas, to, to her Vegas show. I thought, I'll, I'll go to this audition. It'd be fun. So I go to the audition, and people were getting cut right and left, and I was making it through the, the, the entire audition, and there was a tap section, and I knew Debbie Reynolds was watching me, I, and, and as the tap combination finished, and I went to the side. She came over to me, and, and she was sort of talking to me about who I was studied with and who I am and where, what I was doing. And then she said, you know, I really like the way you're dancing. I like your style, and I, but this is just not the right time. Time. So for her to come up and share with that with me, I thought, wow, she could have just brushed me off. Well, this is not the right time. But she wanted to know how that she appreciated what I brought to the table. But she was looking for old and mature guys. And at, at the age of 22, I probably looked like about 18 or 17. <laughs> so obviously, that was not my time to have get that job. But time is a very interesting word, and, I, and it's one that I don't really pay that much attention to. Um, also, while working with Birch, there was another audition I went to. It's, I didn't have time, again, time, to dance, find something full time. So this was a job with Disneyland that it was just for specialty dancers for special events, like if there was a opening of a new ride or, or something that they wanted to bring in dancers for that event. I, I got that opportunity from Barnett Ritchie, and it's just wonderful chance to meet different people. And I got that because I went to that audition because somebody I was working with 
with the birch man said, okay, you need to go here, blah, blah, blah. So it's just a sense of networking. If you have a sense of being a good worker, uh, being pleasant to be around, uh, giving, that gets around and people will want to work with you and, and be, have you be a part of their lives as they want to be a part of your life. So that's another wonderful uh, sense of dealing with time. I was, with, I was in L.A. for like, oh, two or three years when another friend uh, who was part, also worked with Birch Mann, and that time, see the title six had changed, and so I, I, was, it was, I could go on to something else. He says, okay, let's go to this audition to go to Mexico. Okay, so we go to this audition for Mexico. It's for a three-month job in Mexico at, for the National Television Company and to do a variety show on weekends or to be backup dancers for singers. It was called Noche Noche con Talina Fernandez and Luego con Daniela Romo. I loved it. I'm in Mexico, and it was just, it was just so exciting, different, experience, different classes. I immediately went to the, the V studio, the studio of Emma Pulido in Mexico City, and she gave me opportunities to teach dance classes. In, in that studio, there, was, there were actors and singers and entertainers and people who wanted to be professional dancers. It was the place to be. It was just the energy was high. And, and I, I was just loving the experience. Well, that led to traveling around Mexico as a backup dancer for singers, uh, dancing in hotels, dancing in nightclub acts, uh, dancing TV commercials. And there was one, one commercial, uh, it was called Chicles Adams, you know that little box of Adams gum? And I was, I was one of the dancer singers, but I, I was lip singing. And I went like, mm, let me see if I can sing it for you. Mastica tus chicles adams ahora son doce pastillas. Mastica tus chicles adams para dar y refrescar. Well, that commercial was all over the, the Republic of Mexico. There were billboards, and my mom came down, and we were traveling, and then she saw this big billboard with my picture on it. She said, wow, Kate, you're doing something here in Mexico, aren't you? <laughs> but things like that, was just, it was just such a fun time to be in Mexico with a lot of international stars coming from LA, from New York, from Paris, from all over the place, studying and performing. And I got to work, have so, such a plethora of experiences in the world of commercial dance. Mexico is 100% uh, commercial dance, and I, I just loved all the different opportunities, and I, I, I really learned how to manage my time. Teaching classes, start at nine o'clock in the morning, usually for maybe for three hours, rehearsals in the afternoon, uh, evening perform, even performance at the television company, rushing from there to the nightclub at and having a show at midnight and at two o'clock in the morning, getting home at 2.30, 3 o'clock in the morning, I was going, 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 but the energy just was driving, and I just loved every second, every second of it. Um, after two years in Mexico, I thought, okay. I thought, okay, now's the time. Now's the time. I, I, I'm going to go back to L.A. I'm going to pick up dancing with Birch Mann. We were, we're getting ready to go to Logan for the Festival of the American West. And at that time, she said, this was 1982, she said, Kay, since we, Fan and Birch and Gwen, were going to SUU, she said, Kay, why don't you come with us? You can finish your education at SUU, continue dancing, dance with American Folk Ballet, and, and, and have continue your ed education. Well, this made my family happy, made me happy. This education was, is, was is huge. I always knew that I wanted to finished my college degree. It was just not the right time then, and now was the right time. So I come back to SUU, and this is the room. This is the room where we had all of our ballet classes. This is the ballet studio, and this is where 
I taught a jazz class. Um, this is where we had all of our rehearsals with the American Folk Ballet. And this is where I pretty much lived for two years. At the end of my two years here, I go, okay. It's time to go on to the next step. It's time to move on. So I've, I'd always wanted to go to New York. I'd worked in ballet companies, tap dance companies, jazz companies, commercial work. And at SUU, Sanit introduced me to different, mo different modern techniques. And here again, I really didn't know much about modern dance. I'd never really studied a lot of modern dance as a child or introduced it much modern dance until, until I started taking with San. And I knew eventually I thought, okay, I, I would love to have another company experience. I would love to experience that next step. Did I know what it was? No, I had no idea. But I just trusted my gut and I knew that if I put myself out there, if I worked hard, if I was smiled, <laughs> that something would happen, something would happen. And of course, I had a dear friend in New York City and she had planned this, this, this job. We were going to put together this job. So after I graduated, I, I went to New York. Uh, really not only knowing like one person, and when I get there, that job didn't happen. It's like, oh boy, here I'm in New York City. The job didn't happen. So what do we do? Another job we, we can learn and deal with as dancers, we adapt, we adjust, we expand our horizons, and we go for it and we move forward. Well, that's exactly what I wanted to do. <laughs> and I knew that I wanted to go to grad school. So I went to NYU and I was just barely made it through the time to register and to get into the program. I loved my teachers at NYU. They were professionals in the field. They were dancers in, in New York. They were danced with companies and they were had the information they shared with me both in the, in the classroom and outside of the classroom fed me and truly helped me get to that next step. I thought, okay, how am, how, how am I going to know what I want to do or which company I'm even interested in? So every time a company come to New York, I would go to the, I would see the performance. I got a job ushering at the Joyce Theater. I saw every company that passed through New York City. I, from there, I thought, okay, the Murray Lewis Company came. I thought, oh my, I love this company. The sense of artistry, the sense of the total dancer, the idio idiosyncratic movement that Murray would always dance with, the, the, all about the dancer, the, the, the dancer, the showman. I loved it. Then a, a few months later, Nikolai Dance Theater came to the Joyce Theater. And I thought, oh my, I love this company. The sense of totally different from the Murray Lewis Company. Totally different as part of, it was like Nick was considered the father of multimedia. And, and he, he did the costuming, the lighting, the design. Everything was created by, by Alan Nikolai. And when his 10 dancers, it wasn't necessarily about the one dancer. It was about the ensemble. It was about how these 10 dancers came together and that we were all maybe an integral part of the, the whole. And that without that one little part, it didn't say quite what Nick wanted it to say. Um, so there are two companies that I just really connected with and loved. So I thought, okay. My dear friend, Denise Hogan, she was ushering. She said, okay, go, go backstage, go downstairs and talk to them. <laughs> I thought, oh, how am I going to go talk to Nick and Murray? She said, and so she said, you, you've got to. So I walk downstairs. I go back to the dressing room and I knock on, knock on their door. 
<laughs> and I, Nick opens the door and he looks at me. And so he says, yes, what can I help you with? Or something like that. He says, well, I will, I'm interested in dancing in your company. <laughs> and so Nick, the dear man that he is, he smiled. And Murray was smiling. And they said, and I, I, I thought I was surprised that Murray was there. And I realized the two companies that I love the most, are they work out of the same studio. So Nick said, why don't you come to the studio and start taking classes? So, besides taking the NYU, I'd also, I went and enrolled at the dance lab. Every class I could take, I would take, um, immerse myself into the Nikolai Lewis technique. Even during the summers, I would take their workshops. And, and, and it wasn't just like a single class you could take with Nick and Murray. You, you had to sign up for all day. Yeah, like a semester of classes. You'd start with technique classes for two hours. Then you'd go into improvisation for an hour, then you go into composition for an hour. And it was just filled my life and, and took me to a new place in dance where so much of, to more a sense of connecting from my interior to outward expressivity, uh, joint articulation a different way that I'd ever been moved before in my life. Uh, it was, a, it was a, a great experience. So, there's an audition for the Nikolai Dance Theater. And there, I knew, you know, you kind of hear what's going on. I knew that they were looking for somebody taller, broader, bigger, stronger. <laughs> That's not me. <laughs> but I go to the audition anyway, and first combination, boom, cut it to the half. Oh, I made that cut. Second combination, boom, cut you in half. All day long, second day, half, half. Finally, it was down to six of us. And the last combination that we learned was a combination about uh, dancing, partnering, lifting. And my partner, uh, she was bigger than me. <laughs> and Marsha, Marsha had whispered to me, she said, okay, you need to lift me. <laughs> they want to know, they need to know that you can lift. <laughs> so in the combination, there she comes. She's coming to me. I see her eyes. She sees me. Our timing was perfect. Plie down and up. <laughs> I got her above my head over and we did it perfectly. And I thought, oh my goodness, how did that happen? <laughs> but so we're all, the last six of us are standing in the line after the audition. And then Nick said, thank you all for coming. And, and it was just very complimentary. And he says, I'm going, I would like to invite Spencer and, and Kay to stay. And I thought, oh, oh my goodness gracious. That made, that was the answer to my dreams at that time. I mean, it was, Nick took me around the world many times. And it wasn't just, I love to travel. I love to, I love sharing the art of the Nikolai Technique and Murray Lewis. I love meeting dancers from different places around the world. We danced in the Paris Opera House, the, the Kennedy Center, the Lincoln Center, all the major theaters around the world. We'd, we'd do crazy tours where we'd be gone for four months and change cities every two days, or then we'd do another crazy tour of four months where we'd be like each capital city for two weeks, which was amazing. Uh, or we were, one of the easiest tours was six weeks in India, where we were in six cities with only one performance per week. And we got to dance with the different studios and take yoga classes and really get, immerse ourselves into the culture, as well as of sharing of different art forms and, and witness it was to be in such an exotic and beautiful place. But I loved those years. Later on, uh, one of Murray's dancers left the company and Murray invited me to travel with the Murray Lewis Company. I was very fortunate to be able to, and travel with the Dave Brubeck Quartet, which is a jazz quartet. It was, it was a wonderful opportunity to dance with live music. 
because then the, the two companies joined and became the Nikolai and Marie Lewis Dance, Dance Company. But this technique opened up a whole world, a whole world of wonderment, a whole world to me. And words came into, into my vocabulary that not only were important to me as a dancer, but important to me as a person. Words such as immediacy, totality, decentralization, graining, and all of these words meaning a different, a different dance terminology, but a sense of also of life, immediacy, being in the moment, in dance, being in the moment, in life, being in the moment, taking advantage of those opportunities and, 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 a, and a sense of arrival, totality, here we are, a sum of multi, many different body parts, totality. If I want the audience to see this gesture, what is the other arm doing to complement that? So it's just not this, but the whole body is graining to that one moment in space. So a sense of graining. Our life, how do, how do we find graining in life? A tree has, has grain to it, the life, the life where the sap and nutrients travels to the tree. Our life has a sense of graining as we find our pathway. Our body has a sense of graining as we connect viscerally inside through our external skin and outward into infinity. Um, decentralization, a sense of um, maybe not letting your ego get the best of you, or not letting your ego be be who you are necessarily, but a sense of, okay, I'm gonna shed who I am, and I'm gonna be, be a part of something larger. I'm gonna be a part of something bigger than just maybe me, myself. Uh, I get a sense of, just like with our, our body parts coming together, our, our ensembles come, to, come together. The people in the university, all of our dance students from years gone by to now coming together. Uh, the humanity, all of us trying to find a sense of, you know, together, graining, totality, being in the moment. And I learned a lot of that through working with, with Nick and Murray for just about 12 years. That was a huge portion of my life. I know I was 41 at the time. Most of the dancers my age had already stopped dancing. Many of them had gone on to other, other types of jobs, back to school, back doing other things. All the dancers in the company were, were much younger than me. Uh, my, and my nickname was Daddy. <laughs> so I thought, okay, if I'm the daddy here. Maybe it's time for me to take the next step. And so there came a time when uh, a job came, at, came up at SUU, and I knew, oh my goodness, I thought if I could come back to SUU, that would, be, that would be my dream job. So I accepted a job at, to come back to SUU. But then that word time came back into the picture. Murray Lewis came to me and said, okay, you can't leave right now. We're, we're documenting all of Nick's works. It's a, this centennial. We're you have to be a part of this. You cannot leave yet. So, oh, my goodness. If I pass this up, I don't know if this experience will ever come back. But, but again, documenting the life of Nick was, was something I didn't want to miss. And I stayed. So two years later, I thought, okay. Shana Mendini called and said, you know, okay, there's, just put a bag in my ear that there was a position. I think it was a new position here at SUU, and if I didn't want to apply for the job, or if I, if I should look into it. So I thought, oh my, oh my, here, this is unbelievable. You know, I didn't think I'd ever have a second chance. Like, I thought I'd, I'd burnt that bridge, that bridge. So I'm in rehearsals with Murray at the dance lab, and I had arranged a time for my interview at SUU. So that was, the time, that was before the time of cell phones. 
Yeah, yeah, it was before cell phones. <laughs> <laughs> so I left rehearsal and ran down to the street corner to call in on a payphone. So here I am on the payphone. <laughs> Sean and the committee, committee are trying answer, asking me questions, and taxi cabs and horns are sound. I could hardly keep my mind straight of what was going on in this little head of mine. Uh, I'm sure, I, I'm sure they, were, they knew what was going on too. I thought, okay, well, that's it. That's all. That's the interview's done. We'll see what happens. So, then fortunate and Again, I'm grateful, that sense of gratitude. The opportunity came around that I could come to, <laughs> come back to SUU. And these 22 years have been a miracle. The students that have come and gone and allowed me to be a part of their lives as they have allowed me to, and vice versa, it's been a give and take relationship. And it was such a gift to be here and to grow as an artist, as a, a person and as a, a teacher, as a dancer. Um, and I think Life couldn't get, have gotten any better. Life couldn't be any better. I, don't, I, I just can't believe I could have dreamt anything better than what life gave me. And I just know that as you go, as you go through life, and you just, again, you, 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 you're there for each other, and you, you work hard. You work hard and you smile and you laugh and you work and you do it and you, you're, that it just can't be anything but marvelous. It really can. And I'm just so grateful how one thing just led boom, 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 boom. It just is such a, a, a gift. Um, I look at that time and I think, Okay, I can retire. Well, I did retire from SUU, but I can stay here a few more years until that's it. And then they'll have to, they'll have to kick me out in a wheelchair or this is it. Or my dear friend, Diane Markham from uh, North Carolina Art School of the Arts said, okay, you still have time. There's still time. If, that you can do other things if you want to take that next step. And I, you know, I, we all have dreams. And, and so I thought, okay, what I do in my summer times, I go, 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 go. Teach in Mexico, teach in the Netherlands, go to New York, go to LA, go, 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 go to the farm, dance, dance with Birch. I can take that and spread that out throughout the entire year for my last hoopla. Okay. <laughs> So last year, so I retire, how, as hard as that was, um, I retired. And then last year, 2020, I had planned to go teach in Mexico, teach in the Netherlands, teach in Singapore, go to Bali, go to New York, go to LA. And what happens? That's this, the terrible, terrible pandemic COVID has just truly been devastating. and. It's on so many levels, so many, so many, many levels. So obviously that changed my, what I thought it's retirement was going to be. <laughs> so does that make me lose hope for the future? No, I know that, I know that as soon as I can get out there, I'm going to be hitting the road, I'm going to be doing, do I know what I'm going to be doing really? No, but I'm going to dream. I'm going to let my creative mind start and going, going, going. My little inside gut is going to get uneasy, and I'm going to start wanting to create and do. And I know the opportunities are going to come that I hadn't even thought of. And that, that's a, that's what life that's what life is. And I think that as as I think about what my time in the, especially in improv and comp classes, 
I think, you know, that's what life is. We improvise. We try to come up with unique gestures. We come up with unique ideas about how to do things and what to do. In comm class, we come up with ideas and build movement around that, I that idea. We create phrases. How do we connect those phrases together? How do we segue from one idea to the next idea? So I think life is a comp class, an improv, improv class. And I think that's what, in all, in all my years at SEU, that's what I've tried to share with students, not that they become little me's or little Shauna's or little whoever the teacher is at that time, but inspire in them that they can use their talents, that artistic spirit inside of them, that creative spirit inside of each one of them, and to create their life and to go with, go with their ideas and how they're going to build their life. And in so many, in so many ways beyond the SU, beyond the SUU experience. I mean, the SUU experience is this much time just compared to, to their life. So if we can just give them a, a little tools to work with, a little something to help them out the door and to move on, that's, that, is such a, that is such a gift. And what do we do in dance? We talk about quality. What is life about? Quality, quality of living and quality of life. We deal with, we maybe deal with directness or hard into, into soft or collapse into recovery. How many times have we collapsed and recovered? Or a sense of rebounding, boom, boom, boom. Oh, I didn't learn the lesson that time. I guess I have to learn it again. Boom, boom, boom. Just, just wonderful gifts that uh, dance has given us as, as, as um, become uh, humans and artists. And I think that's, I think that's good. <laughs> and I think that's a gift that we all can share with each other, whether it's in dance or whether it's life or with whatever it is, that we can let that, that who we are bless and, and, and bless the lives of those around us. And I just really am grateful. I just cannot say enough about how grateful I am <laughs> for all of you and for all the people in my past and all the people, people in our future. Yeah, it's, great. it's beautiful. Thank you. I guess I turn it back to uh, Ron. <laughs> Okay, I had a problem unmuting for a while. The host wasn't letting me. Uh, thank you so much, Kay. Uh, you're inspiring and, and we can tell you have touched so many lives. Let's open up for questions though. Is there any uh, questions or comments that you'd like to share or ask Kay. You can put it in the chat or um, ask yourselves. You can unmute and ask it yourself. Or you can dance for me. <laughs> or we can dance together. <laughs> we'll always I'll, have I'll time to dance together. I'll be brave and go first with my question. Hi, Kay. Susie. Suzanne Raymond here, Wagner now. Um, yes. And hi to Shauna. And I see you and I'm so grateful that you're here. And um, it's been really fun to see you today. Um, dang it, why am I crying? <laughs> Every time I see you, I cry, Kay. <laughs> um, so I guess that part of uh, what I was wondering is, did you ever get somewhere and think, this is not where I wanted to be or expected to be. And how did you, um, how did that experience change you? I think that, I don't 
don't think I've ever been in a situation where I thought, oh, this is not, I don't like this. This is not for me. Because I always saw each place I was as, they were all very unique and dis different. I mean, from American folk ballet to, to, to commercial dance and to modern dance companies to tap to, I mean, it was just, the, I, I was, it's just always a new and unique experience. And so I think many times I thought, okay, whatever it is, love what it, what it is. Love what it is. How can I approach that and make the best of it for me? What can I learn from this or what can I give to it? What, how, what can I get out of this to make me uh, a different person? So I don't, no, those, I don't ever, I never got into a situation where I thought, I thought oh no, this isn't for me. <laughs> Thank you, Susie. Thank you, Kay. You really shared that attitude with the students here too, Kay. You made them love being at SUU and love what they were doing and um, make the best of what, what they had here. Thank you, you are always an inspiration. We love you. Oh, Jackie, thank you. I, I just can't imagine walking up the steps of South Hall and not seeing your smile and, and welcoming warmth and making everybody feel at home and whether they were a student or a teacher or a stranger coming to campus. You're such a gift to the department. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else have a question or comment for Kay? Ron, this is Scott Phillips. I, I just have a comment for Kay. Kay, you talk a lot about dancing today and you still have it, my man. But <laughs> I remember <laughs> you, I remember you as an actor in Seven Keys to Ball Paint. <laughs> You're pretty terrific there, buddy. <laughs> Thank you, Scott. You were a real triple threat. That's what you are. <laughs> yeah. oh, Thanks thank for everything. You, Your stories were very inspiring. Thank you. Thanks for all of your, all you offered while I was here as a student, Scott. Well, you're the best. It was a great gift. Thank you. Kay, I want, Kay, I want your friends to know that, I don't think I'm on. I just wanted your friends. Okay, you're on, Georgia. Oh, I wanted your friends to know that you also tried to teach your family at family reunions how to dance. We had more fun in our line, <laughs> learning how to cha-cha-cha or dance or waltz. <laughs> You're the greatest. Uh, dance is a way we can bring any group of people together. You know, it just breaks down, barriers are gone. We break down the barriers and we just, we can enjoy, enjoy each other on so many different levels. And movement is one of those wonderful gifts that can bring us together. I'll ask a question. This is, hi, Kay. It's Chris. Hi, Chris. <laughs> How are you? Um, well, I am just wondering, are you working any, on any pieces? Are you going to be setting anything on anyone coming up? I know that we're all virtual, but... Is there anything brewing in your in your head, in your what body? Was, what, what was brewing? What over the past year, when we kept having to postpone different workshops and different events in my life, finally they said, "Kay, do you want to go? We can we go Zoom." And I thought, for me, I just my hats off to those who can teach dance by Zoom. I think it's, they have such a gift to offer. But for me and my lack of technology. <laughs> Lack of use, I, I thought, no, let's just wait till I can go face to face. And so things are, you know, always things are a little twirling up in this little head of mine about different projects and dancing and going back to different places I've been. So that will definitely happen, but there's nothing, nothing right now except when I dance in the, my living room and when I dance in my backyard and and trying to <laughs> stay active in my mind and stay active in my, with my body. Talking about dancing in my house, um, Matt Hanchi, is he still here? Oh, there he is. Hi, Matt. I was going through some things today and I found the poster board that you left me when you left, when you moved out of my basement apartment. Oh. <laughs> today and in it he says 
Kay, thank you for letting me live at your house. I, I, it's something about, I'll, I'll miss your tap dancing upstairs. I thought, oh no, I've been keeping them down. I've been keeping them awake downstairs with my tap dancing. <laughs> Um, okay, that's uh, <laughs> that's awesome. Um, I forgot that I that I did that. It's been, it's been almost like ten years, I think. Since <laughs> um, I I wanted to to sh let you know that um, I uh, I'm a I'm a theater teacher now at a high school, and. I, and for everybody who's listening, I, I took tap two from Kay and he was always super encouraging and said, yes, you should keep doing it. And in the back of my mind, I was like, have you seen my feet? I don't think so. Um, and so we, we, we moved up to tap three and I struggled really, really uh, a lot. And, uh, but I just loved tapping so much that I decided to take tap two again and go back <laughs> down, downgrade and, and Kay just kept working with me and I just took that love of dance and his infectious laugh that I haven't heard in 10 years <laughs> about how wonderful that was. Um, and I just wanted you to know that all the stuff that you taught during dance and the, and you just, you said it all with your body movements. And I'm not, I would not call myself a dancer. I'm more of a mover, we'll say. And just teaching all of my kids musical theater. I took a musical theater dance class from, from K as well. Um, and I have been so privileged to be able to take what you taught me and teach it to my kids now. And I'm so glad that you're doing this to be able to see you from, you know, hundreds of miles away has been such a privilege. <laughs> and thank you so much for, for doing this for everybody. Thank you. Thank you, Matt. And I tell you, um, I, even though I'm retired, I'm not dead yet. <laughs> so I'm going to be calling you and say, okay, let's get together. Let's dance. I want to teach. I, you know, I don't care about me. I'll do it for free. I don't need, I'll, I'll come to you and I'll dance with you. I'd love that. So I'm just putting that word out there. Hi, Kate. Awesome. Hello, Rachel. Oh my goodness. I'm so glad I remembered to get on and to, to see this. It just, it's not my, uh, um, I think you just mean so much just reading everyone's comments. You'll have to read them later, but I, you mean so much to everybody. And uh, um, I just was thinking about, about dance as an art form and why it's important to express um, ourselves in that way. And um, for me, it's just such an individual, um way of speaking about my soul about who i am and i i really feel like when i when you're performing and even in a warm-up you have a very hard time hiding who you are like almost on the inside and um i just want to thank you so much for um for accepting i think each individual in your class for who they were and um i don't ever remember meeting anyone <laughs> who had um, a negative thing to say about you, but mostly they just wanted to be around you because of who you are and who you're, and what you express from your heart. And um, I just I just am so grateful for the joy that you brought to every class that you taught and that you teach and in this video, because I think that's how we all can make a difference is just by like spreading this infectious joy called <laughs> like joy equals Kay Anderson <laughs> and um thank you for inspiring me and helping me really live my art authentically and um yeah that's lovely and you know at this time I just know that after all is said and done and the, and the time comes that safety will get out there the arts, there's going to be such a, a surge, and the arts are going to come surging forward, and it's just going to, oh, the world needs, needs you all so much. It, it's just it's so important, sharing your, that artistic gift, that creative gift with each other in the world. Yep. Okay, there wasn't a better time 
then when um, we were interviewing with you in that phone booth in New York City, <laughs> on all of the traffic, but there's not a day that goes by that I don't thank the Lord about you saying yes. <laughs> I'm just issue you and make this an incredible chapter of, of that book, that time in your life that you have given so much. And to see the students' faces on this web is it's overwhelming. And um, just thank you, Kay. Thank you for all that you have done for all of us. Thank you, Shada. It's, it's truly been a gift. It's been a gift. <sighs> Any other questions or comments for Kay? Well, if not, thank you all so much for joining. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, this is being recorded, so it'll be saved on uh, for generations to come, I guess. But su.edu slash alumni slash forever is where you'll be able to find that video. And please, uh, when you need to uh, pick me up with Kay, uh, feel free to go and get that uh, webinar and watch it again. And please share it with classmates and, and others who are so fond of, of Kay. Uh, hey, thank you very much for taking oh. time to do this. We appreciate all you have given to SUU and so many. Oh, thank you, Ron. My pleasure. Love you all. Thank you.